welcome to my studio. Today we're going to show you how to make the little snowflakes using our glue gun. And there's a couple reasons that we're going to do this. I'm going to use this a lot in some of the Christmas decorations that I'm going to be working with and I thought it would be easier if I just show you one video just on how to do this instead of trying to explain it each and every time we were doing a project. You can pick up the snowflakes from the store. The nice thing about this is, first of all, you've made them, so they're made with love, but you can pick and choose what size and color and everything else you want. So you can make them as big or as little, or you have that control and just not limited to what's in the store. So the first thing I do when making the snowflake is I go to my computer and I Google clip art for snowflakes. And you want to make the snowflake as big or as little as you want your snowflake. You want one with a little bit of detail but not a lot of detail because there's a lot more than you think there is to that. Now um, there's a lot of different ways to kind of make the snowflakes out there but I hadn't found one that worked for me so I came up with my own. I'm going to be using glass to make my snowflake. Now most of us have glass in our craft supplies or running around. If you don't have any glass just go to the dollar store or the thrift store and get an old frame and take that out and use the glass in that so you have that very inexpensively at your fingertips so it's not an expensive thing to do. Now when I first do this the first thing we want to do is take our vegetable spray and we want to spray a little bit onto our piece. Now you see I just barely sprayed it and I'm just going to rub it in there with my hands. The reason you do not want very much is when you're putting the hot wax on it, it will kind of squish and slide on you if you have a lot. So we want just enough that we're going to be able to lift the wax up when we're done with that. So any type of vegetable spray or probably even vegetable oil. Now the next thing that I do is I have my glue gun on low setting. You want to make sure that it's not on the high setting. By keeping it on the low setting the glue is more um, in a little pile in when you have it on the high setting it kind of spreads out more so that we don't want to do that. And I tried several of these and I couldn't make them consistent by just pushing it down and pulling them and it was very hard for me. So what I do is I take my glue gun and I push and get a dot and pull just a little bit. Push and get a dot and pull just a little bit. Push. And so the, you're right next to these and you do not have a big space or a little skinny space because if you do they're going to break in those areas. So all I'm doing is pushing and pulling and it gives it kind of a bubbled effect if that's kind of the word. Now you see I laid my snowflake pattern underneath my glass so my pattern is right there and I'm just working on it as I go. If you do see an area that's too skinny just simply go back and add more glue to it. Now you don't want to try to keep going over that spot in the middle because you'll just get a big glob so kind of work up to it and then stop. And this does take a little bit of practice and just trying to figure out how to have one halfway done and I really couldn't so we're going to go ahead and do the whole thing. Now you're going to get your little tails. We'll pull those off later, don't worry about them. Try to keep these in as straight as line as you can and you can see I'm just pulling my glue gun in each time. Moving it down to the next section, pulling it in, moving it down. And you don't even have to use all of the pattern of each one of these. In fact, I may just use the six on this this time. Now you can see I have the sides and I haven't done the sides yet. Now there's a reason for that, is we're letting the other part cool down first before we do the sides. And we'll start going around. We'll pick those up in just a minute. Okay, so the 
this guy we've got now. So I'm going to do one, two. I don't want to pull him because if I pull him, he ends up with a real thin tail right there. So we're going to do two um, squish downs. <laughs> what would you call that? Where you're holding your hand and and pulling on your glue gun. So we're doing one, two, and that second one ends up right on the other part of the snowflake. And you can see with my glass too, it's nice because I can turn it. Make sure if you use a frame, be careful, your edges are sharp. Nice with a round one because I don't have those sharp edges. Scrapbooking people, you usually have a piece of glass in your circle cutters and things like that that you can pull out and use. Okay, now we're going to go back and do the other sides. Now, make sure I didn't slide my pattern around too much. So, line it back up. That's nice too if you do move your pattern, you can simply just line it back up. And another really nice thing about making them homemade is they're not perfect. Snowflakes usually are not perfect. There's usually usually one side is a little bit different or the crystals do just a little bit different on the snowflake. I know some of you know the story about the gallery that yelled at me that was the biggest complaint about my artwork. It was too perfect and nobody believed it was homemade. So, you don't always want to be perfect. Now, if I was going to continue with this, I would do these lines just all the way down, just like I did the first ones to complete my snowflake. But we're going to leave this one just the way it is. We made sure that we have enough in the middle, and you want to let it dry before we start to pull it off so it's nice and cool before we start. And then we're going to just start working these little edges off and pulling them up. You don't want to pull them apart. If you do pull it apart, lay it back down, glue it back together. It really doesn't show up. See this guy right here? He is too thin, which I'm really glad we had one we could show you. So we're just going to add some glue back into him. And we're going to keep working our way around. Hopefully by the time we get to him, he'll be dry. And you do want the lines thicker. When you make them thin, you don't have the stability of the snowflake. Now we're going to come in here and we're going to move all the little spider webs just like you would. And if you have some bigger ones, you can also come in with your hobby knife and cut those off or a little pair of scissors. But we're just going to remove all of those. Now, a lot of people take them and... Um, put glue over them and um, glitter them, which you can do that, but I really like to take the new Krylon Glitter Blast and I just lay my snowflake down like on a piece of paper or a paper towel and just hit it with that. When it means blast, it means blast. Stay about 12 inches away from it, shake it up really good and just hit your snowflake. Isn't that pretty? Nice and simple. And here's one, and I did the other ones in between it that has been done with the glitter right on top. So you've got all that fun shine to it. And if you notice on this one, I usually put a centerpiece on there. This kind of cleans up your sloppy end, just like when we do the wax design. It cleans up the tails. My favorite thing to use on these right now is you can use rhinestones or something to glue to the middle. But these are little brads. And brads are the things that used to make the people wiggle when we did artwork at school. And just cut these off with your wire cutters. And then just do another dab of glue right in the middle and just set that into your snowflake. And that just really classes that snowflake up even more. So we are done with our little snowflake. 
If you have any questions about what we did today, please email me at art at miriamjoy.com for any of the products that you need from Miriam Joy, please visit my website at miriamjoy.com. There's also a YouTube video for more fun YouTubes that we're doing over there, as well as the Facebook page that you can click on and jump over and you don't have to be a member. And we're doing currently uh, Christmas 2012, we're doing the 25 days of Christmas where we're giving something fun away every day. So thank you and have a blessed Christmas. God bless.